you have also been an ex uh, international student both in your bachelor's and now in your PhD program. Yeah. And a lot of students go through this exercise of making their PhD applications and then writing their SOPs and other mm -hmm. emails to the professors, getting financial support. And if you could share details of your journey, what were the things that you thought were the major roadblocks? And how did you gather the skills and solutions required to overcome them? That would be really helpful for the young audience watching us. Yeah, sure. So do you want me to talk about my bachelor's experience or my PhD experience? I would be happy if you talk about both because there would be students who, want, who might want to sort of come out for a bachelor's program as well, right? Yeah. So I think with a bachelor's, the most important thing is what you're studying. And I feel like there's so many universities abroad. Um, in the UK, from my experience, there was a lot for me to choose from. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can narrow down based on ranking and core structure, which is really important. Um, but at the same time, I think for a lot of Indian students, it comes down to affordability, right? Um, and, yeah. you know, you have to try and look for scholarships. Um, and not all universities offer scholarships specifically for the course you're doing. Um, scholarships are based on nationality, so they might be applicable for a number of nationalities. So you have to check if, if it applies for India. Um, and also you have to check whether, you know, there's a lot of like fine kind of print details that you have to check. So it's always best to email the international office and find out if you're eligible for something. Once you have that short list of universities that have your course that you can apply for scholarships to, then you go ahead and make up so don't just randomly make applications to a bunch of universities without really thinking about okay am I actually going to be able to go there if I get in right because like I said affordability is also a very important consideration so I basically shortlisted based on what I wanted to study ranking and scholarships these are like my three main criteria and these criteria might change for people like I think first thing to do is identifying your criteria and then shortlisting so once you have that shortlist obviously um, write your SOPs and um, I always say like when, whenever you want to write your SOPs you have to try and um, make a list of all of like your achievements and what you learn from them and that's really important what you learn from them is really important because people don't just want to see what you've done but what you've what you think you've gained from it and how you can apply it in your future life and also always talk about what you want to do when you get to the university in terms of like any research activities that might interest you talk about any professors that you know you've read about over there that you might want to get in touch with for uh, research internships or some sort of you know collaboration to just show that you're really interested and make it very specific to the university you're applying to so and then there's also other financial support that you can apply for before you leave India like in addition to any scholarships you might have because at undergrad level there's not a lot of full scholarships that you can get uh, as you might get for a master's or a PhD, right? Mm -hmm. So in addition to scholarships, you can even try and apply for student loans, which are offered by banks in India, for example, by the State Bank of India. So in, if you really wanted to go for undergrad, then this is the kind of combination of financial support you can have, scholarships, bank loan. But I would always you know, focus on your main thing, which is what you want to study, why you want to study, because that's more important than anything else. In terms of applying for PhDs, you know, it's very different for than undergrad because you're applying for a specific project with a specific supervisor. Um, there's, a, there's a website called findaphd.com which outlines like has basically a list of all the PhD um, vacancies in UK and in Europe and you can literally go to this website and basically there's filters that you can apply for your field um, and you can see the description of the PhD project, who is supervising it, whether it has funding for international students or not. Um, and the best thing to do, I think, in addition to finding PhDs in this way, is to do your own research and find professors at universities that you're interested in studying at. And once you find these professors, just emailing them with your CV and saying, hi, I'm really interested in your research. Um, this is why I'm interested. I have experience in this, this and this please find my CV attached and I would love to have a Skype call with you to discuss more. And, you know, this is obviously called emailing them because, you know, they don't know you, but this is how it starts. And it's not new. Like they expect to get emails and they do get a lot of emails from students from around the world with interest in their research. 
And a lot of the times they do reply and, and you, you can have informal chats with professors. It's best, better than having um, email conversations, I think. Uh, yeah. It's more personable. Definitely. And, and I had several of these informal chats when I was applying for PhDs. And I didn't apply for a PhD with every single person I had a chat with. I definitely had more chats with people and then I shortlisted based on, you know, the fit with the supervisor how my personality is, how theirs is, uh, the type of project. Because sometimes in descriptions, the project might seem like something. And then when you actually talk to the supervisor, the kind of skills they need, the kind of experiments you might run, the programs you might have to use might be completely different. Um, and so like, basically, this is part of your research, right? In terms of which PhD do I want to do? This is your like data collection of yeah. basically, what am I going to do? And then once you have that short list, um, just make a list of which PhDs you're applying to. And whenever you have these calls with the supervisors as well, make sure they know you're an international student and make sure you ask them what sources of finances are available for you to apply to. So once, once they know that you're an international student, they can refer you to scholarships within the university mm -hmm. that you might not find on the website or that, have, that might have just come out, for example. It might be a completely new scheme. Um, and then they can start to support you in your application for this financial support. And in addition to this, do your own research, look at the website for scholarships available for your country and mention it to them that, okay, I've seen this scholarship and, you know, this is something I can apply to for funding. So you're also showing that you've done a bit of research. Yeah. And then obviously apply, uh, same thing as uh, I said earlier for SOPs, except now you have to talk more about research and why you're interested in that. And then there's an interview process that happens. Usually it's two interviews um, by the supervisor and then by some external uh, professors within the university in that same department, but not necessarily supervising you when you get there. Um, and then you usually get an offer for the PhD first, and then you find out about the financial support or scholarship later. So you're kind of, when you get the offer, you're kind of in an in-between phase where you don't know if you're actually gonna end up there. And that's a really painful process because you, you don't know what's going to happen with your life and you might get all these offers and then sometimes no financial offerings or you might get offers with several um, scholarships and then you have to choose with you know yourself about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but that's generally the process that you follow and it's the you should start this process in September, October, latest November of the year before you want to go. So for example, if you want to start your PhD in September 2021, you have to start this process now. You have to start contacting people now for next year because the scholarship deadlines will be like December, January. So you have to start talking to professors now. So Rosa? I said the deadlines for the scholarships would be this year, December 2020, if you want to yeah, go in 2021. Exactly. So you have to start the process quite early. And as you can imagine, if the deadline deadlines for scholarships are then you have to start building the relationship with your prospective supervisor at least a month or two in advance and just get start start talking about the project and to, to, to shortlist for yourself as well mm -hmm. so that's kind of like a very short kind of overview of what the process is um, I have a blog also which kind of outlines more in detail about the financial side of things like how to get funding as an international student in the UK yeah. Um, and I'll send that to Jo, maybe she can share it as well with this video. Yeah, I'll add it in the description of this video so that students can access that too. Sure.